But I'm not going to be able to play them because of my uh, firewall on my computer, my company. But I mean, my name is uh, Becky Campbell, and um, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about um, opportunities within the uh, uh, STEM program as you uh, leave um, your high school and go into your college and then into your careers. Um, I work for Baker Hughes. I'm actually a plant manager in my current position, but I'll kind of give you a little bit on how I got started because I do have a petroleum engineering degree. Um, I do want you all to know that uh, I do have triplets at this school, and they're seniors. So let's get, I'll get started. So what kinds of engineers does oil and gas have? Um, we have mechanical engineering, electrical, computer, chemical, geophysics, environmental, petroleum, civil, and materials science and engineering. So there's a lot, a lot of engineering programs that you can go into. Um, so as you're, as you're thinking about um, what you want to do in your future, in your career, there's opportunities everywhere. There are so many opportunities. You just have to pick a, any general engineering, and then uh, most of the engineering classes, actually their first couple years are pretty much the same. They take the same courses. And then as you get into your junior year um, in college is when you'll start seeing the differences in the engineering courses. And you just have to pick, pick which way you want to, you know, what makes you happy? What do you want to do? This, you know, at the end of the day, it's your career. You're the one that's going to have to do the job right. And you want to be happy and you want to be, uh, you want to like what you do going forward. Okay? So what do engineers do? It's the day in the life of an engineer. So I did have, these are the three. I had an Emmy, and I had a uh, production um, engineer, and I had a uh, petroleum engineer. And I'm sorry that I cannot play those. So it's not your typical desk job as an engineer. It can be. It all depends on, you know, that's one thing about engineering. You can actually have a hands-on engineering job. Or if you want to sit behind the desk and be an engineer, you can do that as well. So it's just whatever, you know, whatever fits your needs as far as making you be that successful person and, and, and being a good engineer, right? So if you want to get in the oil industry, which that's what I'm at, you can be out in the field. You can actually be out in the field and working with the, uh, the roughnecks, being on the rigs. Those are your production managers, your production engineers, and then your petroleum engineers. Now your reservoir engineers, um, they're more in, inside because they do a lot with um, trying to figure out. So they have a lot of uh, ge 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 uh, geography classes and understanding what's below the ground, right? What's the, our different rock formations and reservoirs. And that's mostly a, a, a desk job. But they could probably get out in the field every once in a while. So it's just, it's just whatever, whatever uh, you think that uh, fits your desires, your aspirations as you uh, go on to your careers. I did want to kind of show you on the uh, barrels, which is, uh, here's the really, really dark areas. So this is the world. The really, really dark areas you can see is 297 billion barrels of oil a day. That's how much we're getting out of the, out of the ground. So you see where most of, it, uh, most of it is up in the north, right? And then we have 110 billion uh, barrels a day down to 30, and then where we're not. Uh, pulling oil from. So this is just a little bit about Baker Hughes. Uh, the slide's a couple years old, so the revenues uh, we're probably up to 17 billion. R and D's probably about 700 million. This is a year. Uh, we're 60,000 employees. We're in about 80 countries and over 90 uh, in operations. So as far as um, Operations is more of that is where that is where we're um, we're getting the gas oil. That's where we're drilling. Okay, the uh, the 72 countries that we're in could be R and D, uh, could be technology, um, it could be manufacturing. Here in the Houston area, we have um, we have several manufacturing. My apologies. We have several uh, manufacturing facilities here in uh, the in, in Houston. So we manufacture drill bits. We manufacture uh, the completion tools uh, right here in Houston. Um, so it's it's we're all over. We have so we have joint evaluation, fluids and chemicals, completion and production, and that's what I'm I'm a plant manager of a completion plant. 
And at my plant, we uh, manufacture the completion tools. So anywhere between um, intelligent well systems to the packer products, um, RNS, flow control, that's done at the facility that I work at. And I work at the one at Navigation Boulevard. It's about southeast downtown of Houston. And we have reservoir development services, and then we have pumping services. Right down the street from one of our pumping services plants in uh, Tomball. So today's hydrocarbon life cycle starts off with drilling, and then we complete, and then we have completions, and then in production. So in completions, this is where, like I said, this is under my umbrella as far as uh, my plant uh, manufactures the tools for completions. Not only completions, injection too. So a lot of times when they're trying to extract oil and gas out of the ground, they have to send down injection tools because they may use uh, air, water, or whatever to help pressure to make sure that they can get a good completion of the well and get it so it's up for, for production so they can get the oil and gas out of the ground. So this is my plan. So these we manufacture over $180 million a year of tools, and this is where we send them. So as you see, just my, my plant navigation, we send all over the world. And these are some of the products. This is what they look like. So it's a retrievable and permanent packer. And we have an IWS tool, and then we call it a packer. This packer plug is a, um, it's a composite plug. Every bit of that's made out of fiberglass except for the slips. So we, we purchase the fiberglass parts and then we machine the slips and then we put it together. The classes that you need to take in high school, this is what, so some of you are you're all either juniors or seniors in this class, correct? Mm -hmm. So you still have one more year. So make sure you are taking, if you want to get in the engineering program, make sure you are taking physics, chemistry, computer, calculus, and biology. This is where we are. Like I said, we were in about 90 countries. Kind of gives you an overview on, uh, on, on where Baker Hughes is and where we're, where we're actually where we're drilling. So some other topics I'd like to discuss. First of all, my journey. And how did I get where I am today? Because that's where you're going to be starting off your journey as soon as you leave high school, right? You're going to start in your college years. And then what do I do? Oh, no, I'm graduating from college. Now what do I do? One thing nice about being an engineering, I have a petroleum engineering degree. And uh, having an engineering degree really can open up your opportunities for other careers. Not necessarily engineering. You can be an engineer but it can open up some doors. One thing that happened to me is I'm a lot older than you guys, so when I graduated in 1985 um, as a petroleum engineer, there were no jobs. I was not able to get a job as a petroleum engineer. I graduated from the University of Tulsa, and everybody in the uh, Tulsa area had anything to do with oil and gas moved to Houston, mm -hmm. 1985, boom. No jobs, so what was I gonna do? That is one thing nice about being an engineer. Look at all the chemistry, math, um, uh, um, ex experience that you have from these courses. It opens some other avenues to other careers that you can that you can get yourself into, and that's what I did. I was hired as a um, as a chemist. I worked as a chemist for a year and a half, and and, and did well. And then I was hired because um, one of my customers actually came by one day and asked me if I, if I knew somebody or was I looking at other opportunities. And I said, yeah, of course I am. And so we, we visited a little bit. And then next thing you know, um, I had an interview set up. And I got another job. So I worked for a chemical plant. So for 20 years, I made ammonia fertilizer in Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma. And uh, it was a very good, it was a good experience. I learned a lot. But I knew that wasn't what I really wanted to do. So, you know, after about 18 years, I decided I, I'm going to go back. I have a lot of, I'm trying to figure out how I can take my 18 years, my college degree that I got 18 years ago, my work experience, and, and what do I want to do? What are my aspirations? What, what do I want to do going forward? Because I knew this wasn't my job forever. 
So that's what I did. I started thinking hard, and I thought, you know, being working at an ammonia plant, making ammonia fertilizer, Title V, a lot of environmental. Well, I can easily go back and, and tack on another degree, and that's what I did. I went back to school, and that is one thing nice about now going forward online. I mean, it's, it's for everybody. You can get online and get, and get your degree, um, and that's what I did. So I got an environmental engineering degree, and that's what opened up my door to go into to get a job at Baker Hughes. So I was at Baker Hughes in Oklahoma working for one of our chemical plants, which we made some, we made one oil product that went in the wells, but everything else was, it was ethylene polywax, so it was more of a, a wax plant. So we made products that went into um, anything that you, if you needed to bond something to something else. So it was like tied, so we make a, the, the tide, the orange tide, that's, that's, that was our Baker Hughes product that makes that orange tide bottle. The two-in-one air, uh, hair uh, conditioners and shampoo, what puts those two together is the Baker Hughes, the ethylene polywax. It's our bond. An Aquafresh toothpaste, a little green and the Aquafresh, that's Baker Hughes product. So that's, those are the things that we did at that plant. But that still wasn't where I really wanted, but, um, I liked my job, and then I uh, one day I had a couple of senior VPs come from um, Houston, came up to do an audit just to check out the, uh, the plant, the facility. Well, I guess I impressed the uh, our visitors so well that they, uh, about a month later, one of them called me back and offered an opportunity down here in Houston. So I was just like, wow, you know, this is a, it's a good opportunity. I was going to be a manager over nine nine facilities and two out of country, one in Venezuela and, um, and one in, in Mexico, and I thought this is an excellent opportunity. But I had to think about, you know, kind of moving my kids. You know, I was a single parent. What do I, my kids are in uh, seventh grade, but I thought, you know, it's, it's a good opportunity for my children. I checked out the opportunities in Houston. What, what's, what can Houston bring to them, or what can they get out of it, and then what can I get out of it? And uh, it just was all positive. So that's why I made my journey from uh, Tulsa to uh, Houston. And, um, and that's how we got in this area, because I did Google uh, the school district. And uh, uh, Cypher was, um, that's one thing nice about Google, you can, they'll tell you everything. So I got online, and uh, they said that Cypher was a good school district. So I started, and that's how I came to this area, and my, uh, my girls do go to this school. So. I did that job for about two years, and I just, it just wasn't hitting home to what I really wanted to. I wanted to get into manufacturing. I wanted something more. I mean, I liked HSME, but I thought, you know, I have all this background. I, I want something else. And, and I went to my manager, and I said, listen, I gave her a PowerPoint presentation. I said, this is what I want to go do. And they're just like, she's like, wow, this is not what, you, this is not even close. And I said, yeah, I know. But, uh, you know, I, I'd like to have the opportunity. So, opened up the doors, had some interviews with some uh, VPs, and I got the job. So then I was a production manager for a product line. Uh, we made the gravel pack products for uh, Baker Hughes. And I did that for 14 months. I took a team from 43% being productive to 91% productive. We hit every metric that we could possibly hit in that product line. And, and my company was just uh, really, uh, Excited, uh, they they praised me, and that's how I became plant manager. So now I have the entire facility under my umbrella, and so far we've had three. I've been at my job for a, a year and a year and four months at the plant manager, and right now we've hit three solid good quarters that we've never hit record breaking revenue and hitting all of our metrics, um, which is huge. Our dashboard. So we have all these, we have 26 manufacturing shops in Baker Hughes. Our, my plant is the only one that has one red mark on a dashboard of 16, 16 metrics they hold us by on our dashboard and ours are all green. Green except for we have one yellow, or one red. And, uh, but it's the only one out of 26, so that's huge. Like I said, so we're a big company, 60,000 employees, and my plant's the only one doing is, is, is uh, I feel like is uh, keeping us all going. The other plants are doing well, well, too, because we wouldn't be breaking all these records if we weren't. But I'm just saying that ours is we're at the top, so that makes me feel good. But um, so that's kind of.
kind of my my journey on, on where I'm at and, and, and the things that we need to that you guys need to always understand that just because you have this degree that doesn't mean you're stuck whatever degree you always have the opportunity to take that and, and whatever aspirations that you have go for it don't be afraid not to uh, take risks especially the uh, females okay because one thing about the difference between a man and a female is, is a man's just going to go ahead and do it. He doesn't care. He doesn't care if he's uh, successful, successful or not. He's just going to go ahead and do it. Women want to get prepared. We want to be prepared because we don't want we don't want to not be successful. And that's how that's how our inners that's how we are as people. So we need to just try to break that and think outside think outside your body and say, Hey, I'm going to go for it, and I'm not going to worry about it because. The only way you're going to get better is if you do fall back. And that's one thing, a good manager will know that, that if, if, if you're not successful and you have a good manager, your manager, was it, is it your manager's fault or is it your fault? So you, you have to work together, and that is when you guys get out and work, and we'll work with your manager to make sure that you know, you're getting everything that you, that you need and your resources, right? Because your manager needs to set you up for success as well. Don't take it upon yourself kind of use your managers as resources as well as you get further along in your career. So a typical day as a plant manager, I could start off saying pretty crazy from the time I uh, get to work to the time I leave. I put out, I don't know, 10, 20 fires a day it seems like. I'm not a fireman, but uh, it feels that way sometimes, especially on a Monday. Probably Mondays and Fridays, they're just, it's, it's, it's go, go, go. And that's one thing about in, in our line of business, it's about meeting Meeting deadlines. Being managers or, or when you get into uh, your careers, deadlines. You can have hourly deadlines, daily deadlines, weekly deadlines, quarterly, monthly, and then annual deadlines. And they just pile up. And it all depends on, you know, who you're serving and who your customers are. So my day is coming into work, uh, starting off with, um, we always talk about safety, because we want to make sure that everybody comes to work and leaves the same the way they came. We talk about safety, we talk about quality. We definitely do not want to send out parts that um, fail in the field. You heard some of the incidents, right? Big oil, Wakanda, out there, uh, we don't want to be a part of that. It's just quality. We want to make sure that we are doing the right thing. So we take quality pretty serious at Big Q's, and we want to make sure that, uh, that when we sell our tools, they are going to work and they're not going to fail in the field. Um, and that's, like I said, my shop is a manufacturing shop, so they make the tools. So we do that. I have meetings throughout the day. I'm always coaching. I'm always mentoring folks throughout the day as, as they hit, hit some roadblocks and trying to figure out how we can uh, work through that. Customers, we're worldwide, right? Customers are calling every day. This guy in uh, uh, China, they want a tool. Well, this guy over here in Malaysia wants a tool, and they all want it the same day. So it's all about prioritizing and trying to figure out how do we meet all our customers' uh, needs every day. So it's 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 time management is huge the higher up that you get up in a company because you literally can work, well, I do work uh, 13, 15 hours a day easily. And that's just the nature of the beast. Um, demand, one thing you need to know is an engineer going into the engineering uh, program, there's more engineers retiring than people have been graduating. That's good for you guys, because that means we're going to be hiring. We need engineers, right? And if, and I, I do know we go to a lot of Baker Hughes recruits out of a lot of the schools. I do know we go to UT. I know we go to A&M. We go to Penn State, um, Baylor, um, UH. I think uh, I know we recruit out of UH. So, but we're all over, and, uh, and all the companies are. So, just remember that. Stay on target and get that engineering degree because when you graduate, you're in demand. You, we need them. Um, talk, I'm going to talk a little bit about supply chain because in Baker Hughes, it, it's a huge supply chain. It's all the way from customer ordering something all the way to logistics. But in there, we have engineering. So it does fall, it does, engineering does fall inside. So that's one thing nice. So if you do get an engineering degree and you do work for a big oil gas company or a big company, talking about the opportunities that you can actually move into um, another 
uh, functionality or another department would be going into supply chain. So it's it's huge. Um, it just it just opens up your doors. Obviously, the bigger the company you work for, the more opportunities that you have within the company. So you just need to make sure that you're always you look at that and uh, use that to your uh, benefit as far as why, when you're working for whatever company you're working for, you know, reach out there and see what does this company have to offer and, and then start networking. You know, when you get a job, you know, 10, 10 15% of your job is network. You need to be. You need to get, get with the people that um, get in, some, some companies have uh, social, social events you need to sign up for those and start networking and, and meeting with these senior leaders and, and senior management and so they know who you are and, the, and they do check up on you and, and follow up on you and, and to help you when you're wanting to do something different. Okay, that's real key uh, and make sure that you do and take advantage of that. Okay, uh, as far as degree, yes. Any more, you know, there are still some, there's um, some labor jobs obviously because we do our machinists are labored you do not need a degree to have a degree to machine um, or weld but we we like to have certifications but as far as getting a good you guys are headed you're in the engineering program finish you do need to get your degree because that does help you you can get a job in a company and do well but if you didn't finish your school and get all in your degree if you're in the same lines in the lineup to, to, to get another position and somebody has a degree versus you, they may get it because of that. It just because one thing about your degree, it is a proven fact that you can do, it, right? That's your certificate that yes, I can learn and I and I can it's it's about learning that you can learn, you're capable of learning. That's kind of your little certificate of I can do the job, right? So that is very important. Certifications, there's certifications. Um, one thing I recommend for engineers is, and one thing I did not do because I didn't have somebody talking to me about it, if you, you should get your uh, PE, get your uh, certificate, your engineering certificate. I believe though after you graduate from college, you have to work, I don't know if it's a year, I would check into it. Is it five now? Okay, it's changed since. Uh, yeah, I should have. <laughs> yeah, so it's five years. But that is that is something that is it's handy to have because um, not all companies have these, and they're nice to have on board. They really are, and it's it's just good. It gives you the edge on another engineer going into the job. It helps. So that's one thing I would look. I would uh, uh, definitely make sure that you keep that on your minds and get it as soon as you can. Um, the one thing I want to discuss is having it all. So what does that mean? What do you think that means, having it all? Anybody? You guys are engineers. I know you have a mind. What do you think that is? Opportunities. Huh? Opportunities. Opportunities? Yeah, it's kind of, it's, it's whatever you want it to be, having it all. It's going to be different for each person, right? Having it all for you may be different than from you, right? So in your career, having it all is going to change. It's going to change throughout your career life. And that, and that is because it's what means most to you. So right out of college, here I am, young, right out of college, having it all means I want that job and I want to get paid the big bucks, right? Am I right? That would be having it all. Is that possible? Maybe. It all depends on what your big bucks are you talking about. Sometimes you may have to start off just a little bit lower to prove yourself that I am that person that can do that job and do that job well. Right? You still have to go through the trenches a little bit, even though you have that degree. I see too many kids right out of college that come, because like I said, we're, yeah, I work in supply chain, so I have different, it's just not all engineers, I see all different um, degree folks throughout our organization and some of these kids right out of college think, I hear them being frustrated, that they think they should be getting paid more than me. I mean, they, you know, I mean, I put my time in, I've worked, you know, I've worked a long time, um, 
probably 30 years, and you know they're thinking they should come out, and uh, you know they're not getting paid enough. The market is pretty well, and if you look at engineers, uh, the pay is pretty good. Uh, have you have you looked into it? Anybody here looked into what does an engineer pay when they get out? Fifty some? No, actually, uh, higher. I think it's like ninety for like the yeah. petroleum. Yeah, you can get eighty-five, eighty-five, ninety thousand dollars, and that's a lot of money, right? So eighty-five, ninety-five thousand dollars is, is a lot of money to start off. Especially when you're living on your own. Oh yeah, you're living on your own. Um, yeah, it's 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 a lot of money, and and that is right. Engineers do get paid very well. You may not have the best job at first, but sometimes, like I said, you got to fight through those trenches. Get through that job that you don't like. Do well. Make sure, and that attitude, attitude is everything. And, and building that relationship with your customers, building a relationship up with your manager, and and uh, and, and, and building and making that work for you as far as helping you get through to move on and hire up at your company or to better jobs. So having it all, you may not feel like you're having it all right now. But as, as you're growing, having it all, what if you want to stop and have a family? Having it all for me, I chose to leave. I chose to leave my home in Oklahoma with my three girls and move down here. Um, had to make sacrifices, right? They had to make sacrifices a little bit because they had a, they had a, friend, they had a friend base, right, in Oklahoma. And now they moved, seventh grade. I mean, I, was, I did pick perfect timing. It would have been horrible for me to move them in high school, right? So I'm thinking seventh grade, not so bad. Eighth grade, I didn't realize that they, they went to Hamilton. I didn't realize that they had so many issues as they did. They hid them from me. Um, but kids are cruel nowadays. It's horrible. Um, but they were the new people coming into the high school. So then I was OK. So it was only one year of suffering. But they, I thought they made it through. I didn't have them coming home complaining too much. So, um, so the kids weren't that bad, but uh, I think there was just a few. But those are the things that you have to think about having it all. You have to make sacrifices. And that's what you have to think about, having it all sometimes. You may have to make some sacrifices um, in your life, in your career, in your work, to get where you want to have it all. Right? But it's going to change. It's going to change from, from each individual point of view. It's going to be different. senior year in college you're gonna if you want petroleum there will be some specific courses that you have to take but you can always you can always do chemical because you have a lot of chemistry chemistry background and do physical chemistry uh, you can do organic uh, when you're in college but that I would head towards petroleum and, and you can always do a chemical your uh, chemical background chemical job absolutely just petroleum, you'll have um, a lot of uh, reservoir rock courses that you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have to take as a, if you went as a chemical engineer. So it all depends. I mean, a chemical, uh, you'd be working, uh, well, chemical engineers, you can, uh, we hire them at Baker Hughes, you can work for an oil and gas company, um, or you can actually work for a chemical company. And either one is, you wouldn't, either one would be good. But I hope that answers your question mm -hmm. as far as, yeah. Anybody else? Well, I know you have more questions. What was your favorite class in high school and in college? Favorite, high, favorite class Math, in high school? History. Math, physics. I liked, I liked, I'm a problem solver. So yeah, I liked uh, math and, and physics. 
and even in college. But let me tell you a little bit my uh, computer class in college. Just because you guys are probably going to not know anything I'm talking about. Um, we had a language called Fortran. <coughs> Anybody hear Fortran? Okay, you're too old. <laughs> um, how about punch cards? Oh, <laughs> how do you know about punch cards? Um, my parents. Okay, okay, yeah. So I would write a program in Fortran language, and it wouldn't be a very big program. And I'd have punch cards about that tall. And we literally had to, had to go to a punch key, and as we were writing our programs, this card, each line, I'm talking each line of your program, would be on a card. And that's how you, that you would turn that in. So we'd have rubber bands, and rubber bands were stacks of cards, and then I'd turn that in as my computer program. Can you imagine that? That's, that's crazy. I know you guys don't even think about that, but that, that's how it was. So modern day, and, and uh, um, <laughs> computer is very, very nice. It's, it's nice. You have no idea what we went through back in the days. So technology is uh, the way of the future, right? Mm -hmm. Were the uh, computer science courses required for your degree? It helps. When I went to school, no. But it helps because, especially nowadays, I mean, everything's on a computer, right? So computer computer science courses would help. It aid in any kind of engineering. Yes. Yeah, I was actually uh, really fortunate that I actually had a calculus class in high school, and that that wasn't really well known back then. Um, so when I entered my first year of college, it was the exact same book. I mean, I was surprised. I had the exact same book that I had in high school. So I mean, I already. I kind of flew by that class, right? Because I already, I, I did the whole work already. So, there was another question. Okay. There's someone stretching. A quiet bunch. So, uh, in this room, who's, uh, what engineers are we looking at here? What type? Got petroleum in the back slash chemical. Petroleum. Petroleum. Civil. Mechanical. So civil engineer, you can help us on that road, uh, 45 going through uh, downtown? <laughs> you know when we go like this? We can think of her. Our wonderful civil engineers, right? <laughs> on that road. How'd they do on that job? Yeah, they probably didn't have it uh, because of the, the, the ground and it, and it shifting and moving. They probably didn't have much of a, um, they didn't have help on that, put it that way. <laughs> Anybody else? Chemical or environmental. Chemical or environmental. And those are two interchangeable as well. You can go down the chemical path and, and get into environmental. Because I did do environmental. That was when I, when I was in uh, Oklahoma, I was going to go back to school, and that's where I got was an environmental engineering degree, which got me into Baker Hughes. So I did a lot of um, engineering work for Baker Hughes when I first, first came on for environmental. But that can, they're interchangeable as well. You can go chemical or environmental, environmental so. And you're always gonna, we're always going to deal with the environment, right? Mm -hmm. So making it better. So that's, that's a good field as well. Anybody else? Do you use much programming in your line of work? Programming? I don't. But we do have programmers that they do. Um, as a plant manager, I don't. But I do know um, the engineers do. Yes, they do a lot of programming. Um, so, like our design engineers, so they're making these these tools on 3D programming. Yeah. Um, and also, we have programmers that, so our machine shop builds, it's going to make this part, and it has uh, slots in it, it has grooves, um, tap and thread. So the uh, programmers will actually do it on the 3D, and they simulate it. They simulate to make sure that the program is written right, and then they have the part that's cut, which is pretty pretty neat to look look at. I watch them. I see them do that every once in a while because it's 3D. The guy kind of sticks out on their screen. If they have a 3D screen, it's pretty neat. The one thing that we're that's new technology, and, and Baker Hughes is one of the uh, companies that is uh, 3D. I know you've heard of 3D printing, right? A lot of you. Yeah. 
So there are some parts that we can take from raw material. So we use we use stainless, we use nickel, um, 4140, and then castings to make our parts. So they are doing it with uh, stainless um, nickel school. They're, they're experimenting, so we're making small parts. But they're actually taking powdered metal and using a 3D printer to actually make these parts. We have a, a 3D printer in our rank and growth facility that's doing it right now. So that's kind of cool. That's that's the new way. It's gonna we won't need. I'm not, I'm not sure about the machine. It's, it's going to be a while because there are some pretty pretty big parts. I mean, right now this machine just does small parts, but it'd be nice to have one online to help out on on uh, scrap replacements and you know trying to get them caught back up and back into production. So. What's that rate you had in uh, 2020? Tumble. That is um, that's our. Yeah, we have a, uh, on 2920 right there, we have a training center, and they put it right there for, uh, for uh, a show, we'll kind of show how, because we do have some tools that we have there that we build just for the Tomball Training Center for a show. But across the street is our pumping services. So they, that, those are the folks that go out and do frack. So they go out and do the, uh, the frack. They, they train the people on their no, they they, uh, they train they train the folks on there on what, on what it does. Customers go there to see how they how they work down there. Yeah. So at our facility, we have a at our engineering they do test. They have a rig at my plant too, and the engineers. So it's the um, it's engineers designing R and D. So do the R and D engineers. So we have sustaining engineers that help us through manufacturing. Which, and then we have the design engineers that are designing the tools, and they, and they are trying to see if they work down home. So we have a rig on site as well, and they use that. The Woodlands has the drill bit. They have they simulate drill bits, so they buy you know they buy rock, you know they buy huge rocks, and then they're trying to drill bits. You know they they, they keep trying to drill and see if they can try new because they always try new new drill bits. And customers, yeah, and customers want to want to see. Now, what's most interesting in the Oklahoma, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, where where uh, I worked for many years, there's a town called Glenpool. It's just southwest of Tulsa. We have a rig there, and we do test. It's a big rig, and we do test drill bits there, and our customers test drill bits there as well, because it's the most underground uh, diversity of, of formation. Um, you hit almost every type of rock type underground right there in that area. So that's that's huge for testing. Which is kind of neat because it's, it's just right here. It's, it's close. And we hit just about everything all over the world right there in Oklahoma. Yeah, so I, I know that is really neat. Anything else? Well, I wish you guys the best of luck. Um, keep going. Uh, stay focused. Get your degree. And uh, you're, gonna, you're all going to be very successful. I believe that. <laughs>